I remember having a chat with um, my grandma, with my nan. It was like such, such a vivid memory. Of, I probably was only about 10 or 11. Um, and you know, when, when your grandparents ask, what, what do you want to be when you grow up? And you know, I think my twin sister said like, she wants to be a vet or something like that. And I said, I want to be a footballer, but I wanted to play for Liverpool men because at the time I just didn't know women's football existed. It wasn't a career path, it wasn't anything. And I remember my grand saying, oh, you know, like maybe when, you, when you're older, like they'll, they'll let girls play, like you'll be able to play on the, the men's team. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to play for Liverpool men when I'm older. Like, that's my dream. The Taylor shot is a goal! I was born in Birkenhead, raised in Wallasey, which is the town over. Yeah, so I've got um, a twin sister and two older sisters, and that is my theory as to why I play football. So obviously my dad is a big um, soccer fan. He grew up by playing lower level himself. So I think he, he really wanted a son. When me and my twin sister came around, I think he realised he wasn't getting a son. So he dragged me and my twin out into the garden when we were younger and I took to it a lot more than what she did. I think initially, um, you know, I, I loved it and she was too busy doing cartwheels and handstands and, you know, trampoline and gymnastics. That was more her thing. I just remember my dad, he got me a goal in the backyard so I would just take shots on him all the time. I think that's why I, I become obviously a, a striker. I think all the shots on my dad in, in the backyard and he'd throw the ball up to me, I'd just volley it. Uh, just all day pretty much is what we'd do. I started playing in primary school or to elementary school and um, you know no other girls played and it was really seen as a boys and a man's sport. So I absolutely loved it and I played with the boys at school and initially that was just like before school or on breaks or lunch or after school. But then in the end they let me play on the boys team. Birkenhead is actually where um, my first club, Tramia Rovers, is based. So it's ab about 10, 10 minutes or so from where I, I grew up. When I got picked up to play for Tramia, I was at a I think I just got to high school, it was like my year seven, probably around 11, 10 and 12, and we actually had a girls team, so we went into this tournament and there was all these other girls playing, which I had no idea that was even a thing, and from there got a letter in the post about um, if I wanted to go play at Tramia, so from there that's when I joined Tramia, I think I was about 15 when I first played for the senior women's team, just something that I just loved playing football, I was so passionate about it. Not knowing that any girls played or that it was a woman's sport, I just enjoyed playing. I came to college when I was 18, I came to college in the US to play. At Tramia, there was a goalkeeper, Jo Fletcher, who signed at our club. She really missed America and she was telling me all about it and really sold it. So I think she, she was at college for her first two years and transferred to Oregon State. It just sounded like it was very professional because you know back then the game wasn't professional it wasn't a professional league we had to pay to play all my teammates had jobs um, so either you, you know go into university yourself um, while trying to play football or having to work um, you know that that wasn't really a professional league so for me hearing from her you know you train full time you play two games a week you know you get a free education, you know, that really sold it to me. So my gut feeling was, I need to go to America. Um, and as much as the, the England setup at the time told me you, you're really risking your international career by doing this. Um, but I just knew it was something that I had to do. And I think it was hard. My first year, I was homesick. I think, you know, when you commit to something at that age, 18, like you don't think it's going to be a big deal and I just was like yeah I'm going to go but the reality of being away from your family and your friends and you know I think especially back then there was no smartphones either I didn't even think FaceTime was a thing in fact it, was, it might have just been before Skype so I just remember calling home a lot I didn't actually get onto Skype but then obviously now I think things are a lot easier when I graduated college the WPS just started up almost made a team but it didn't work out so that's why I had a big decision to make. Do I stay in the US and not play or do I leave the US and continue to play? And I made the decision to stay in the US and not play which 
by doing that made me realise how much I wanted to play. So I took an assistant coaching job at Fresno State. I'm supposed to be health coaching the girls, but all I wanted to do is jump in the session, or all I'm thinking about is playing. So I kind of saw out the season, and yeah, I had a, as much as I told the, the head coach, Brian Zroshka at the time, no, I'm done playing. I don't think he ever believed me. So that's from there, I went to play in Australia. I always wanted to get back to the US, and I knew the NWSL had started up that year. That's when I came um, back to the league in 2014. I actually tried to sign at Seattle, um, but unfortunately it didn't work out. I ended up at Washington Spirit, which I had a good season there. Um, you know, first year in the league, you know, kind of adjusting to the pace. It's a very challenging league in it, and it's very challenging to this day as well. You know, everything went well at, at Spirit in 2014, but when the opportunity came up to go to Portland, I just wanted to get back over the side of the world. I was super happy when I got the news. Um, I was in New Zealand at the time, with the time difference. I think I woke up in the morning and uh, I had a tweet on my phone saying that I'd been traded, so I was jumping around. I'm sure a lot of people look at that and be like, well, she's been to so many different clubs, like what's wrong, like why does that happen? For the most part, it was, it was my decision. It was just always wanting to push myself and, and get to as good of a level as I could possibly get to. The priority for me is that we just keep winning. I just want to win this tournament with the team. So I think once the Euros were over, I knew I wanted to come back and uh, you know, I, I was hoping that I would be able to come to Seattle. I think ever since I left the US and signed at Arsenal, I just wanted to come play for Seattle Reign. You know, I think eventually it, it did happen, which is great. Being here now is, is so good and I, I really feel like the balance is, is there and we play some top football. We've got some amazing soccer players, both domestically and internationally. You know, playing with Megan Rapino is awesome. I'm, I'm glad that we're teammates now, not just playing against each other for our national teams. Um, she's been great and exciting to play with. Beviana is incredible. She's a great person and she's a great player. I know she went to Japan and, and played and was so successful over there and came back here and was so successful. There's so many players you could say in this league who, who are like that as well. I mean, that's why I love this league and that's why I find it challenging, it is a hard league to play. I think the, the speed of play is so much quicker here. The travel is really tough. I think the, the travel is quite tough within the league in general. One of the positives of playing in the UK, the, the travel is a minimum. It's, you know, you're on a bus, you know, a bus for three hours. So that's like a long journey. The flights here are, are the, an extra element and an extra challenge. And um, I think that's how I, I've tried to have the mindset to, to see it as it's just an added challenge. Can you still perform through the tiredness, through the jet lag? Every game's hard, it shows. There's no hiding the fact that you're tired, no hiding the fact that you're jet lagged and that you're a step off. So you can't physically get to a ball quicker, you're taking too long to make a decision. And um, you know, that's something that I've, I'm having to try and um, be able to be okay with and find ways and you know, be a bit more diligent with the way you travel, be more diligent with recovery and rest and do the absolute most you can. Ultimately, I've always wanted to improve and get to a level that I can get to and reach potential. And, you know, I'm always pushing on to try and challenge myself and improve. That's always kind of been the goal. And I think a lot of the time it, it was going from one place to another to get to where I want to be. I've never really intended to just spend, you know, one season at a club and move on. It's not something that I've ever really wanted to do, but I think kind of when push come to shove, I, that's a decision I have to make. And, it's almost like quite quite brutal decisions that I've had to make, some good, some bad. And you know, whenever I've made a decision, I always doing it with good intentions and you know, trying to see how, how can I best improve and how it's going to help my football and, and ultimately happiness. And obviously, there's been some barriers and setbacks with injuries and such, but um, you know, ultimately, it's allowed me to finally get here and, and be at this club. So I'm happy about that. Best player I've played with, that, that is a tough question. I've trained with Kelly Smith just before she retired. Lucy Bronze for England is great. I love playing with Frank Kirby as well. 
played against Kelly Smith when I was younger. Christine Sinclair also is one of the best players I've played with and against. In terms of defenders, Becky Sauerbrunn, I think is a very good defender. She reads the game very well. Also Abby Ersig. In terms of goalkeepers, Hope Solo, probably the best goalkeeper I've played against. I've played on too many teams, too many good players here.